we started doing some sort of automata theory earlier this year, and then we have a bit of a break because I think you went gallivanting in faraway places and I was busy with other things as well. And now we're going to pick up the thread again and continue talking about uh, automata theory and uh, formal languages and stuff. Um, I mean, if it is regular expressions, I hear these are kind of like some people have bad dreams about these, is that right? Like, like this one here. <laughs> One puzzle is to find out in one word, in one sentence, what does this regular expression mean? Yeah, because it has got a very short description, I mean, in English. Uh, and, and, and one uh, uh, exercise is to find out what it is. So regular expressions are a way to define what we call regular languages. And maybe, can I write something? Mm -hmm. In the previous videos, we looked at DFAs, which are deterministic finite automata. And we looked at NFAs, which are non-deterministic finite automata. And they were little machines. I mean, DFAs are little machines. They have a state, and then they read a symbol, and they go to another state. And they recognize, and you give them a, a string, and it says yes or no. Yeah? And the NFAs are a slight variation where there is of some, some non-determinism. It could be go here or could go there. But there are also little machines. So first of all, every DFA is an NFA. And we can also, uh, it's more interesting, turn an NFA into a DFA by a power automaton construction. And so hence we can see that they define the same set of languages. And intuitively, they are the languages which, uh, which we can uh, recognized with a computer program which uses only a fixed finite amount of memory. But today, we look at a different angle on the same languages, and these are called regular expressions. And in a way that's quite interesting, because regular expressions give a more sort of denotational view on regular languages. Instead of looking at it as at, at, by, by machines, we, we, we look at a high-level description of these languages. And Regular expressions are actually very useful. So they, they are used in, in, uh, in, in editor commands to, 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 to describe editing patterns, or you can also write um, a, 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 something called a stream editor, where you can give a, a pattern and, and you can uh, do automatic soft editing jobs. So if you want to do some simple text processing, you use this SED, and then there's another program under Unix called Grab, which it recognizes all, all regular, I mean, tries to match regular expressions to some input and, and, and gives your, uh, prints all the, all the lines where it appears. No matter what the amount of input is, grep can filter out or show you the things that you're interested in. And that can be uh, very useful. So it's very useful uh, to learn regular expressions. They also have applications in uh, like compiler writing, uh, so when you want to define what is a number or what is what is a, a symbol, I mean what is a, a variable name, and so on, then you usually start with defining them by regular expressions, and then there's another level, uh, which is called context-free grammar. But it's usually in two levels. So first of all, the tokens are recognized via regular expressions, and the tokens are then processed. Uh, to give uh, 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 via, uh, via a grammar, which we haven't yet looked at. Let me continue this picture a little bit. I will tell you what regular expressions are in more detail. And then I, 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 I give, give a semantics in terms of sets, where every regular expression gives rise to a set of words. But this doesn't really help us to, uh, to write a program which recognizes uh, a string or not, because the, the set is infinite, so, so, so how do we do this? So instead, we will define a translation into NFAs. There's all the translation the other way around, which I'm not going to look at today, which is quite fun. And it shows that regular expressions and automata define the same set of languages. That's interesting from a theoretical point of view. Okay, let's look at some regular expressions. So I'm going to define regular expressions, the set of regular expressions. Oh, oh before I do this, we had to fix an alphabet, sigma, just a finite set. So for example, sigma could be all uh, letters. I'm not writing 26 letters now. Okay, like this. And then we define, given an alphabet, we define a, a regular, the set of regular expressions. And for every regular expression, so if you have an, like an E, which is a regular expression, then I define the language of E, which is a, a set of words. So it's a, it's a subset 
of sequences of strings over this alphabet. So this is just to be reading strings over sigma. And so language is a set of strings, not all of them, just some of them. Okay, okay we, have, we have already seen this when we did automata, but that's so long ago that we maybe want to watch these videos again. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so what are regular expressions? So I showed one example, but let me give you some more examples. So for example, is that the word like hello? is a regular expression. And what is the language of this regular ex expression? Now it's very boring. It's just a set containing only the word hello. Okay? Just the word or just those letters? I mean, does it... No, it's a word. It's not, there's words? no comma in between. This set is just one element. And this one element is one uh, word or like say string, yeah? Which is the, the, the word hello. This isn't the alphabet that makes up that word. This is that word. No, the alphabet is in the moment the letters from A to Z. Yeah? Yes, okay. And we have one, one uh, word, which is hello. And this is the language of the regular expression hello. Okay. Now it's a bit boring now in German. I say hello with an A. So now I can write this. I can say... Is, are you from Germany? Yes, I'm from Germany. It's a surprise for many, but I am. Okay. Born in Berlin. Okay. So we can write plus. This plus this. Now, okay, I don't want, okay, let me just call this expression Ivan. Yeah? And then now the language of Ivan is no points for this, hello and hello. But that's a bit here, I'm, I'm repeating lots of things. So let me write another regular expression. I call this E2. I write the regular expression H and then say either E or a l l o and this is the same language so 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 l of e2 is also these two words because you can read an a h and then an, an e or an a and then l l o so is that e plus a but that just means you could have either so you mean yeah the plus is a part of forming regular expression you have either e or a you have first an h and then an e or an a and then an l l o and that means you have the words hello and hello but now let's let's get a bit more interesting well, let's get a bit more interesting. <laughs> Which language is this? Let's do something more interesting. Okay. okay, let's do the star. And let's say we want to have hello, but any number of else. So now we have a language which is not finite anymore. Because I can have no L. Hello. Hello. Then hello. Hello. Oh no, that's this. Hello. And then now it's hello. And so on. Yeah. So if you do a star, you can repeat this any number of times, yeah, whatever is under the star. Okay, let me let me go on. This is yeah, let me show you some more regular expressions and I'm changing the alphabet. I'm changing the alphabet to only A B C. Okay? A is a B C. And now I want to have the regular expression of all the words which contain A B. So how do I do this? I say, okay, in the beginning, I have a sequence of A's and B's and C's. Then I have an AB, and then I have another sequence of A's and B's and C's. I mean, I don't want to write down the language of infinitely many words, but they're exactly the words over ABC, which somewhere contain an AB. I can also contain several ABs, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah? And you read this so like this, so you can repeat a, B, C, which is like anything, and then after a while you can say A, B, and then you repeat A, B, C again. So this could be ABBA or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's do some... So for example, in this... Okay, let's E4, so some examples is ABBA, yeah, uh, is in this language, in the language of E4. So what's not in this, in this language? Uh, for example, B, A, A. It's not in the language, right? And so on. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Shall we do another one? I want the one which contains uh, an, an even number of A's. Or oh, do I know how to do this? Okay. Maybe it's too complicated. <laughs> you can do it. You've got this. You've got this. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> so I have an A. And then after the A, there is some B's and C's. And then there's another A. And I may do this a number, any number of times, but then I may have uh, in the beginning some B's and C's, and then after I have some B's and C's. What's the idea? So we, we see some B's and C's, then we see some A's, then there's some B's and C's, maybe also none. 
Then there is another A, and we repeat this. So we always get an even number of A's, including null A's, right? And then there's some more B's and C's. This is where zero is an yeah. even number again, right? Yeah, yeah. Zero, even, e zero is an even number. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so um, th th this is quite an interesting puzzle. Uh, because uh, we can also, uh, there's a theorem which I, which actually I can, this proof I can sketch, that for every regular expression, there is also one which is exactly the negation of this one. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is another challenge to find the regular expression which defines uh, all the words which do not contain a, b. I mean, it has this a, b. This one is, is easy because then you have an odd number of a's, so that, that's not so difficult. But the, the, the language of all words, uh, or the regular expression, defining all the words which do not contain a, b. Yeah, that's a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. It's good for, for puzzles. I mean, maybe there should be a little puzzle game, you know. We'll leave that for uh, exercise for the viewers, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so let me do one more. Uh, I want to have the sequence of a, b, of a, b, but only always interchanging. A, b, a, b, yeah, or b, a, one way or the other. Alternating. Yeah. Alternating, yeah. I don't think it's a good word, yeah. So, so what I do, I say a, b, in brackets, star. Yeah, so a, b, a, b. But now it may start with a b. So I say either b or nothing. And nothing is written epsilon. Yeah, epsilon is nothing. Empty word, the empty string. And, and then after, I have also a plus epsilon. So that may be an a in the end. It hasn't, doesn't have to end with a b. So that's a regular expression defining it's like a, b, a, b, or b, a, b, a, and, and so on. Okay? Okay, so now we have seen some examples. Now let's do the math. Regular expressions. So I'm defining the set of regular expressions and assume there is given a sigma. So sigma is my, is my is a finite set of symbols. The first regular expressions are a bit strange, maybe. You may want to have the empty language, so no words. So I write empty is a regular expression, okay? And the language of empty is, surprise, surprise, the empty set, okay? So, okay, these two symbols look the same, but one of them is a regular expression, and the other one is a set, yeah? just to confuse everybody, mm -hmm. okay? So now, we have another regular expression, which we have already seen, I mean, the, the zero is, is, is almost never used, namely, the regular expression which stands for the set containing only the empty word is the set and epsilon here is now a word. So epsilon is the empty string. The problem is it's very difficult to write the empty string, right? This epsilon is this string is intentionally left blank. Yeah, that's how to read it. Okay, yeah? okay. so what comes next? We had symbols. So if you have a symbol from sigma, so a is here a variable maybe yeah, it's not the letter A, it's, it's, a, it's a, any, a, any, any symbol, then A is also a regular expression. And the language of A is just the set containing only, the word containing only, so, so any, any, any symbol also is, is a word of length one, it's a, it's a, it's a string of length one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, we, so what else do we have? Then we can put one regular expression after the other, so that's, that's this. If we, if we have, oh no, at least little letters, for example, okay. E is a regular expression, and F is a regular expression. Then I can form EF is a regular expression. And the idea is, so a word over EF, says the first part is something from E, and the second part is something from F. So, so how I define this? So if I have a word V, which is in the language of E, and the word W, which is in the language of F, then I can concatenate these words, these are like strings, I can concatenate them, and they are in the language of E, F. So I think we have seen this in the examples. That, so here we, for example, if you look at the language of this thing here, it's B, or the empty word, right? And here we have all these a, b, a, b, a, b, and so on. And the language here is a and epsilon. 
And now if you form all the combinations of words from these three sets, you get exactly the language we wanted. What's missing? Uh, plus. I haven't done plus. A plus is actually easier. So, so again, I have E is a regular expression and F is a regular expression. And now I can form E plus F is a regular expression. We've also seen example for the plus, right? And that's very simple. In this case, L of E plus F is either a word from E or union a word from F. So that just sets theoretic union. There's one thing missing. What is missing? I have to define the star. Okay. So if A is a regular expression, then E star is a regular expression. And it means I can repeat E any number of times, including none. So how do I define the language? So I say, okay, first of all, the empty word, so this is an epsilon, this is an element, looks very similar, uh, is in L of E star. And then we say, okay, if you have a word V, which is in the language of E, and we have already formed a word in L E star, and we can put them together and form a word in L E star. That's a, you see that here is an inductive definition. We can repeat this rule any number of times. So we can do this. So that's the, 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 the formal definition of the language of a regular expression. So if we define two things, we turn the set of regular expressions, given an alphabet, and then we define the language. So now we know what regular expressions are, and uh, we have defined the language uh, using a bit of math, a bit of set theory. Uh, I'm not a fan of set theory, by the way. So we know, I have defined the, the semantics, but we still don't know how to run a regular expression, how to recognize whether a word is in the language, because language is infinite. So we're going to do this, so we're going to define the translation from regular expression into NFAs. And I'm going to do this in Python. So what we're going to do is we define the, 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 the type of regular, or the, the class of regular expression in Python. And then I will define the translation into the NFAs which we have also defined in Python. And if we put, and we know how to run an NFA, yeah, that we defined how to run an NFA. So now I'm translating the regular expression into an NFA and I can run it. And this way I can actually have a recognizer for my regular expressions. And actually, uh, this is, a, more efficient, even if you just want to grab a match a, a word, no stars, just a word, then if you do this by hand, it it's, can be a bit inefficient because you have to, to go back, you have to, to, to look at some letters several times sometimes, like if it's, if it's overlapping. But if you use this regular expression translation, it's linear, it will look at every symbol only once. So it's, it's actually a useful programming idea how to translate regular expressions into into automata. And that's the next video then, right? Yeah. Now let's do the math, okay? If we must. Yeah. Hooray, you should say. You yeah. might ask me some questions. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I'm going to concentrate, I'm going to be there. <laughs> yes, concentrate. Potter, concentrate. <laughs>